Now, what are the advantages of the pulse code modulation or the amplitude modulation? Whatever phenomena we are discussing, they all depend upon the logic gate system uh, that was first developed by Boolean mathematics. So now we are proceeding with pulse code modulation, PCM uh, over the amplitude modulation. We have to go through with what advantages are there uh, in the pul pulse code modulation as compared to amplitude modulation. So advantages of the pulse code modulation. The first one is it allows the message to be transmitted by a coded electrical signal. So we have to give a proper code to that. So coded electrical signal uh, is allowed to form a message. Next is it is immune to noise. That is there is no noise and external interference unmatched by any other pulse system. Then it allows ready use of repeaters for long distance transmission. So long distance transmission means space transmission without any commutative effect on the waveform of the signal. So during the total transmission, the waveform never changes. It remains in the form of digital signal. It allows the multi-channel telephone communication over the line wires. Now next is about the communication channel and we have to define its bandwidth. So we find that the communication channel, this is a physical path between the transmitter and receiver. Physical means a medium. So there is a medium between the transmitter and receiver and that is called the communication channel or the transmission medium of the communication system. Next is the bandwidth of the communication channel. The bandwidth of communication channel is defined as the difference between the highest and the lowest frequencies. If the highest frequency is FN and lowest is FL, the difference of the two gives the, uh, that is, uh, highest and lowest frequency, that is the bandwidth of that channel. It allows to pass through it. And uh, the bandwidth of the communication channel must be sufficiently large, wide, to pass all the significant information. Because all the significant information are in the form of various frequencies. So that band must be quite broad to send those signals. In other words, the bandwidth of a communication channel must be equal to or greater than the bandwidth of the information signal. For example, if a cable television transmission has pass band from 500 kilohertz, it must have a bandwidth of 4500 kilohertz to 4.5 megahertz. Now, what are the guided and unguided transmissions? So, we have to give certain example for the guided transmission and then unguided transmission. The media are used for point-to-point -point communication. Important examples of guided media are twisted pair. That is, we take the cable, it is twisted together. Then coaxial cable, that is the cable which are having the common axis. Then third is called the optical fiber. The optical fiber when we speak, uh, it means that we take uh, the optical fiber for the communication. Their upper coating is different and inner coating is different and it is using a principle of total internal reflection. The quality of transmission in guided media is determined mainly by the nature of media. So refractive index plays a very prominent role. Unguided media. The free space is called the unguided media. I have explained earlier also what we mean by the free space. The free space means either air or it is vacuum. When we say air, it means that air has very low density and it is almost a partial vacuum. The density of air is 0 0.001293 grams per centimeter cube. So after decimal, we have two zeros. So the number starts from the third significant digit. That's why free space means either vacuum or it is air. So free space is an example of the unguided medium. In unguided media, the spectrum of frequency band of the signal produced by the transmitting antenna is more important than the medium 
in determining the quality of transmission. Now we have to classify transmission media on the basis of their nature and we have to give their approximate bandwidths. So bandwidths of the transmission media depending on the nature of communication channel. So earlier we have discussed the various communication channels. The communication is classified broadly into three categories. One is the line communication, that is point to point, contact between transmitter and receiver. That is called line communication. That is the antennas are with the same heights. It occurs through the guided media such as twisted pair and the coaxial cable. Coaxial cable is widely used wire medium, having the same axis, which offers a bandwidth of 750 megahertz. 1 megahertz is, hertz is 10 to the power 6 hertz. These cables are normally operated between 18 gigahertz and 1 gigahertz is 10 to the power 12 hertz. Now, optical communication, that is with the help of laser, it makes use of the light beam in carrying information from one point to another through a guided medium like optical fiber. And that is called a laser beam. So laser beam is nothing. It is an ordinary light with a narrow beam. So when it comes out from the other side of the uh, tube, the optical fiber, it comes out with a very great intensity. Optical communication using the fibers is called the frequency range of 1 THZ to 1000 THZ, that is microwave to ultraviolet waves. Ultraviolet waves has a frequency of 10 to the power 16 hertz and the wavelength of about 10 to the power minus 8 meters. So 1 THZ is 10 to the power 12 hertz. That is just equivalent to gigahertz. An optical fiber can have transmission bandwidth above 100 gigahertz. The space communication. Now, if we wanted to carry out the space communication, we use the electromagnetic waves of the different frequencies. So before proceeding with the space communication, I will clear certain electromagnetic wave frequencies. Electromagnetic waves are those waves uh, which constitute electric and magnetic field, but they are not deflected by electric and magnetic field because they do not carry charge. Another thing about the electromagnetic wave is that their velocity is the same as that of light and this was first calculated by Maxwell, that is by equation C is equal to 1 over square root uh, epsilon naught into mu naught, or it is epsilon into mu. Epsilon means the permittivity of the medium, and mu means the permeability of the medium. That is called the Maxwell equation. So by putting these values, we get the velocity of electromagnetic waves, and they are short wavelength high frequency radiations, so electromagnetic waves have a spectrum. The first member of the spectrum is radio wave and the second member is infrared. The third member is visible light. The fourth member is ultraviolet. The fifth member is X-rays and the sixth member is gamma rays. So electromagnetic waves of different frequencies means we are referring to the electromagnetic spectrum. They are used to carry the information through the physical space acting as the transmission medium. So radio, television and satellite communications are all the space communications. That is with the help of radio waves. Communication through free space using radio waves take place over a wide range of frequencies that is a few hundred of kilohertz to few gigahertz. Some important wireless communication frequency bands so the services are standard air broadcast and its frequency band is about 540 to 1600 kilohertz. Then frequency modulation broadcast, FM broadcast, which normally we listen from radios. It varies from 88 to 108 megahertz. Then comes the television communication. Their frequency bands are too many frequency bands because it is a wide spectrum. So it is 54 to 72 megahertz. VHF, very high frequencies. 
76 to 88 megahertz, that is for the television uh, broadcast, 174 to 216 megahertz, ultra high frequencies, then comes 420 to 890 megahertz, that is for television broadcast. Then cellular mobile radio, that is for that the frequency bands vary, 896 to 901 megahertz, that is mobile to base station and 840 to 935 megahertz, that is base station to mobile. So like this, these are the various uh, frequency bands for the various type of services. And then comes the satellite communication, that is the uplink and downlink. So it means that when we speak uplink or when we speak downlink, we are referring to the position of satellite. The position of satellite is approximately about 36,000 kilometers from the, uh, that is curvature of the earth or it should be 42,000 kilometers from the center of earth. That point where the communication satellite is situated, that is called the parking orbit, uh, that is the parking orbit and uh, the whole globe communication can be carried out from that particular satellite. So satellite communication. It has got the frequency range from 5.925 to 6.425 gigahertz and 3.7 to 4.2 gigahertz downlink. So uplink and downlink are uh, related to the position of satellite or its orientation with respect to earth. We will find that the spin of the satellite for the communication is the same as that of earth. So spin time of communication satellite and the earth will be the same.